Hey, nerds, stick around. We're talking Clippers today. Hello, sailors. Live and recording, hopefully. Lord of God, I'm recording this one, Aaron. <laughs> we are back. We are and back. Live. Yeah, we'll see how this, we'll see how we can fuck this one up this time. Uh, spectacularly, just I hope that it's actually recorded. So it's time yeah, it goes down in flames potentially. So, what's new with you? What's new with me? Um, not much, you know. Just still. Still pounding out work and and, and uh, just getting through this. That's what she said. Pandemic. Well, I, was, I would hope so. Oh my God, excuse me. Uh, I just lifted some weights. Came from the gym. You know, <laughs> crushed, the mu- crushed the muscle milk. You know. <laughs> Did you once again forget forget leg day? This is it. Was literally I, 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 it, my life has become such a parody. So literally, it was leg day today. I literally did legs today. <laughs> Sitting on the quad machine. I was like, I've become the, the the joke has become the reality. But yes, so yeah. So today we're talking Clippers, Los Angeles Clippers, for all you basketball Ooh. fans. And, and 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 uh, literally, without even getting into what was submitted, anything would be an improvement upon what um, they have right now. Interesting. Well, let's get into it. Let's bring on Derek Yoder and Ryan Foose. I've yet to meet a foos I don't What's like. Up? Yes. Gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Are How's you in relation to Don Foos, Ryan? No, maybe. I don't know. No, no Don on the family tree that I know of. Cleveland and Park. No, and like Don and no Foose, Chip Foos either. We, no we, we established Foose. that before you came on. I know I was, I was late. I was late. I was drinking yeah. muscle milk. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell it's showing. Yeah, it's very in the, my jowls. Oh, I, I met your lactation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want to do? You sure we're recording. Let's. let's Whatever. Listen, like ten people watch the show. It doesn't matter. Okay. That many. Yeah. Okay. Well, give or take ten. Building. We're building. Uh, so let's talk with. Uh, just let's go clockwise here. Uh, Derek, how's yes. it going? Good man. Um, let's. Uh, who the hell are you, and where you come from? <laughs> We how much time we got. <laughs> <laughs> I am originally from northern Ohio, dinky little town, Sandusky, Norwalk area. Hey, all right. Oh, do you and you and Aaron know each other at all? Uh, I actually lived in Cleveland 12 years. I'm familiar with Aaron's work. I don't yeah. think we've ever met, though. No, but Sandusky is about 45 minutes outside of Cleveland, ish, yep. in uh, home yeah, of. I worked with American greetings, in greetings for 12 years. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I worked with American Greetings for 12 years. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I did time in Cleveland. Beautiful. I don't know. I don't know. Cleveland's a small city on the face of the planet. I don't know how we haven't crossed paths before, but um, it's a pleasure, Derek. Uh, I'm a bit of a hermit. It's probably my fault. I don't. I Plus, don't. you're an actual. You're a successful designer. Then you're, you're not. A, uh, <laughs> no, I just. One day I'll learn. One day I'll learn. Uh, no, I pretty much work and keep to myself. To be honest, this is this is heavy socialization for me. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry if you're feeling the social anxiety. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I told you. Yeah. I Have funny. another drink. If my wife and kids were here and they're screaming, I'd be sweating bullets. <laughs> I am sweating. <laughs> that's a stressful. That, that becomes a stressful environment as a as an um single owner of one dachshund that's penned up right now. So uh, I have a mini. Oh, okay. What color? Uh, red dapple. Get out of here. I don't. Have, I got a red, but he's not a dapple. But oh, he's, a he's, he's an old man. He's passed out. He doesn't come up the steps much anymore. Oh yeah. You know, my boys carry him up and down now, but he's passed probably passed out under a blanket. Look at the super design bowl bringing people together in their backyards, man. I love all, all the wieners. <laughs> <laughs> Wiener Bros. What's your, what's your, what's your, I guess that's just the thing we do, Wiener Bros. <laughs> what's your wiener's name? Harvey. <laughs> right, mine's Lemo, short for limousine. I'm all, <laughs> you, put more, you put more thought into yours than I did mine, but I like that. I like that. They were so planned way, way ahead of time. Uh, Derek, are you uh, your um, uh, one man wrecking crew? Is it you're full time by yourself? 
Uh, no, I about it'll be five years this June. I moved back down to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, I work for Rickabaw Graphics. We do collegiate branding. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. So, uh, tell me about uh, some of the work that you that you've done with them. Um, mostly small schools. Uh, I don't think no D ones that you would recognize. Uh, but the studio itself, uh, they did Ohio State. That's the big one. Oh, cool. Uh, Baylor before their recent rebrand. Uh, bigger schools. I've done mostly like um, uh, D3 schools. And oh, cool. We have a um, partnership with uh, NJCA, NJ, National Junior College Athletic Association. Okay, so cool. We get a lot of junior college stuff and a lot of, we do a lot of um, native name changeovers. Oh, yeah, that's probably mm-hmm. big business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's time to not be racist anymore, guys. Let's. Uh, people don't like change as it is, let alone stuff like that. And it just yeah. But at a D three school or D two school, it, is the bureaucracy maybe a little bit easier? Less people to kind of get approval from, or how's that? Less go? people, but more passionate. Oh, really? That makes sense. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, you would think, oh, D, you know, local community college. Oh no. Small college towns, it's almost like a cult like um yeah. environment with the colleges. I don't care what level you're at, it's mm-hmm. it's you know, it, it gets very tribal for the lack of a better pun, you know. Yeah. So I've I've never done a logo for a university. Um, what is I'm really curious actually about the sort of the the process that you guys go through mm-hmm. when you're pitching ideas and because I'm sure it's obviously with every design job starts with research. Sure. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and then you probably have to dog and pony show your research to the people you're talking to. Not really. Oh, um, really? No, we, you, we, you know, you all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's the lactation again. <laughs> <laughs> um, just in the presentation, we usually show them, um, uh, we usually show like uh, the local teams, conference teams, just for comparison's sake. And then let's say it's, um, you're doing an eagle, yeah. so we'll show other schools with eagles. Maybe show some photos of eagles for a rep to draw uh, inspiration from. But it's yeah. really, no one cares. Seems to care about pencil sketches, nothing like that. They just want to straight up vectored. Let's see it as finished as possible. I'm oh, tapping really? on here on how to get this shit done because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good shit. So, when, so when you, when you're presenting, even first round, do you? It's obviously easier. You don't just show them. A logo you probably show it on helmets and t-shirts and flags and mm-hmm. and billboards and and the whole sure. the whole thing so they can they they can sort of visualize it yeah you I mean, show it full color show it one color black and white you know so they yeah, can yeah. see the usage and all that sort of thing and then um really i know a lot of people don't like to do you know, sit and listen to people, but you got to make them feel like they have a voice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was literally going to ask Derek, I go, do you do focus groups? Uh, uh, yeah. It, it is important. Cause you know, like you want people to feel like they're going to go on Facebook and trash it anyways, but you still want them to feel like they have a voice. And, and, and like you said, you know, even like Aaron said, small schools, very passionate fan base, whether it's a sure. or not. Sure. I mean, I, well, I mean, the, the question would be in feel free, I don't want to paint you in a corner here. Do you, when you get this data from your focus groups or your, you know, your circle of, 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 of fans, you sort of show this work in, in front of, are you taking the feedback seriously or are you sort of just, just sort of taking it in and being like, eh, all right, the, the, but here's why we're not doing that. Uh, to be honest, pretty seriously. Um, but a lot of times you'll have the focus groups come back and it conflicts with what the stakeholders, presidents, deans, coaches sure. want yeah. so then it's one of those things that's like oh boy you know we gotta, <laughs> we gotta you know we gotta show a little of this little of that to please everybody you know that's tough to do when you're trying to yeah it's impossible to please everybody and when you try to do that you end up pleasing absolutely. nobody absolutely you know? yes. yeah and this and is you guys awesome. you Sorry, guys got to get a lot of credit too because you're talking about colleges that it seems like there's only 30 animals for every college in this right. uh like right. there's yeah. how many bears how many birds Yep. So yeah. credit to you guys for being like, <laughs> how do you make it unique enough that it's theirs yeah, without pissing absolutely. off 20 other different colleges across the country? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, is trying to do your research because there's mm-hmm. so much stuff on Dribble. There's so much stuff on Behance. It's like, 
even if it's not someone's official logo, there's so many concepts. You still don't want to get close to that. You know? Yeah. I mean, look at all the ideas we're ruining for super design board. <laughs> 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 we're just ins ensuring that you, that this team's logo is never going to look like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, like, sometimes you wonder when you do see, like, the current Clippers mark, you're like, what went into this? What's the thing, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm well, going to didn't go into this. Right. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, instead of trashing it, I was like, boy, I'd really like to hear their theory or well, what was the concept behind this? No, yeah. absolutely. And the, and the process, I mean, the sports logos are the most uh, criticized things out there mm -hmm. and, uh, in the design world, honestly. I, the Clippers, the, the story, the behind the scenes, I want to hear about the Clippers logo isn't even process related. I want to know like what stakeholders and, and, and like how many guys like Steve Ballmer had to be in the room to give their yeah. two cents that that's what they ended up with. Oh, that so, was when Ballmer took over, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. He, he, he bought the team. I think they rocked with the old branding for a season or whatever. And then they switched over to the new branding, which looks like, like EA sports right. brand from 1998 or whatever. I mean, and Objectively speaking, I don't. I've never heard anybody say anything good about the the. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've heard that somehow Miami Heat's design team designed the Clippers logo. Really? I wish yeah. I could. That, that would, would make complete sense that a rival team would design. <laughs> it. it was impossible. I wish I could find the article. It might have been, you know, a total lie or whatever. But it was almost like, yeah, they did it as a joke, and the Clippers loved it. I could be totally mixing this up. No, wow. this, this, is, this is hot topics. This hot is topics, this yeah. gonna. I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't like trashing any design, especially sports design, without knowing the process. Absolutely. But when it comes to that specific team branding, it just it it, it just screams like Steve Ballmer's nephew had a copy of MS Paint and and and. <laughs> I, I like it more than you do, but let's before we get into that. Uh, uh, okay, we can get let's, into it. Let's, talk, let's, let's introduce Ryan. Ryan, you've been quietly What's sitting up, in guys? the corner waiting. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. So uh, I got I got to figure out a better way to ask these questions, uh, Aaron. But who the hell are you, and, and uh, what do you what do you? Do I kind of like the I like, <laughs> kind of like the, the the entry point there, Billy. So let it roll. Uh, East Coast guy that ended up growing up in Wisconsin and floated around down to North Carolina, and now I'm currently in Tampa. So Tampa. Uh, have done Vegas? everything. For, you moved there, yeah, place. for for oh. work, for work. Oh, okay. So I will say though, and this gets you're not the only one. When you bring up Florida, it's immediately like, damn. But Tampa, I do think, is its own little bubble that I, I really truly love. Oh, yeah? It's not the touristy Orlando. It's not the craziness of Miami. We we enjoy it, but we tend to. Uh, when we go on vacation and they say, Oh, where are you from? It's like, Oh, we're, you know, Southeast, we're out of Southeast area. So, but um, yeah, did everything from user experience with IBM to brand development with minor league baseball. And now currently doing some contract work with the NFL crew at fanatics, doing some stuff with hat club while also rocking this freelance booster side gig. So it's just kind of uh, hanging out at home, just doing a lot of sports related stuff. So happy to That's be cool. here and live in the dream. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, with, with the last name Foose, you you there's no way you're not building a brand with that name not part yeah. of it in some way. So well done. Appreciate it. And then uh, this is a total aside question, and <clears throat> I don't have a horse in this race. I I attach no judgment to it one or the other. It, is Florida literally not participating in COVID precautions like like the rest? Like what? It sounds like it's going on down there. Yeah, I believe it's Florida and Texas that are kind of like the gripping arms uh, meme, and yeah. then everybody yeah. else. I think that's yeah. how well, it I works think, out. I, I couldn't <laughs> be more exhausted from any sort of thing happening. I don't. I, I couldn't be more worn out from having an opinion one way or the other on COVID and quarantining and isolation and yada yada yada. But uh, the word on Florida is the party just never ended. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it doesn't. I yeah. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to blame it on the sports, but it is interesting that we have COVID, and all of a sudden you win a Stanley Cup, you win a Super Bowl. Now <laughs> the Raptors, the Raptors are here. And it's like it. Yeah, it's like out of all the cities that have consistent parties for the last year, it's like yeah, this is yeah didn't quite work out probably in the correct timeline for health and guidance, but um, it is what it is. We're we're 
similar to Derek Hermits in some way. We're, we're not going out. We'll, we'll yeah. chill at home and enjoy the weather from our backyard rather than uh, being out with the masses. Mm-hmm. Smart, smart. You were, so, you were in the boat parade tossing around the Vince's boat. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we weren't there. Oh, bummer. There. So, uh, <laughs> well, so you're doing mouth. freelance. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. No, so you I'm did- just go ahead. I got muscle <laughs> with me. Fucking just go, just go. <laughs> so with with the with the Fuser design, mm-hmm. uh, your, which is uh, your freelance, I guess, is there ever a conflict of interest with like the the sports stuff you're doing for your your main gig, or is that does that ever inter- interfere? Like, how does that? Does no, that yeah, it's over? definitely yeah, it's definitely a, a balancing act and. I'd be lying if I said I didn't get in trouble to pass kind of uh, oh, okay. switching over, but NFL and NCAA is their own thing. They get all the designs they can and work hard during the day to just say, Hey, here's concepts. Um, and then hat club, which soon this month and then through the rest of the year, we'll be starting to produce stuff is more like a, a freelance gig in terms of here's the concept we want. And then I just throw things out there, but I won't be working for a lids or a secondary element or, or okay. figuring out, you so know, what is, calling what is up hat, a bucks what is hat club? Hat is club that- is like the largest, like custom hat company. They're just rocking things. So different colorways. So they'll release like a Yankees hat that's maroon and stuff like that. But then they're really getting into designers creating these concept hats. So baseball caps with just new logos on it. Is this like oh. a, is this like an online direct to consumer type of deal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. they used to have brick and mortar. I think they're down to like two or three shops, but, but no, everything's I mean, online. So it's if Hat Club contacted the Super the Design Bowl, did they? I, I could no. I said if oh. they did. Oh, we could. I could be a conduit between. I could help these designers license, like your Clippers logo for a hat for Hat Club. Is yeah, that, I think I think I know for a fact that is? MLB league they're all good but uh i think nfl is the one league that they don't quite touch as much but i think everything yeah. else they have some kind of connection to. i'm just trying to find any way to monetize this thing yeah. okay <laughs> no, no, Billy, we, we, we all we all knew the road you were walking down there <laughs> i was amazed you positioned it like you wanted to give up a percentage to any of the designers <laughs> I, I don't own these designs I, listen i own none of these designs so if you're trying to sue us sue me for using the Clippers name or something like that. That that being said, if if the designers want to pony up, say thirty percent, you know, <laughs> sort of, you know, to the platform. Call it a finder's fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maury Maury from Goodfellas over here. <laughs> wanting so, his, so which one? Which one of you, uh, 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 Ding Dongs, decided to do the wanted to do the Clippers, or did I just assign that? I can't remember. Uh, it was on my list. <laughs> it was on. It was your. It was on your list. Mm-hmm. Must have been I, both, both, both. No, both. that's the thing is, uh, I was gonna put it on my list because I I don't like it. But then it comes down to this thought of like, what the hell do you do for it? Like it's, it's a t- such a detailed oriented ship thing, and then you start thinking. And I think it was brought up even when you released it. Like L.A. sports are so crappily named for LA the fact that it's Lakers, <laughs> they are, they are. Lakers, but it's a Minnesota name, Clippers, well, but that's a San Diego. Here. And yet, and even like LA Dodgers is about trolley dodging. And it's like, there's no trolleys rocking through LA. It's just, it's crazy that the city that's kind of this Mecca for cultural side of sports, mm. all their names are just not great. Well, so, well, that's so interesting. It reinforces One of the teams are native. Brooklyn. Yeah, it? Brooklyn. Of the teams Brooklyn. Are native. Dodgers are from Brooklyn, Lakers, Minneapolis, Rams, Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Chargers, uh, San Diego. Well, they, There's all those Rams in Cleveland, right? <laughs> Big, huge Ram problem we've had over here for decades. Ooh, that's why I moved. <laughs> <laughs> well played. So this was this was a close match, fellas. Very close. Um, which I thought it would when I got the designs in. Uh, but congr- congr- congratulations to Derek for your win. Um, so before we before we start talking about about these horrible logos you guys did let's let's look at the uh let's look at the horrible logos that 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 you guys must have started with here um now probably i don't i don't know about your guys's process but typically you start here when you get a new logo project i would i would think again i'm gonna tap out some notes here because this is all new i don't this is not how i do my shit at all (laughs) learning on the fly here guys 
Um, let, me just, let me just let me just go out on a limb here and say the 72 78 is a pretty dope mark. Yeah, yeah, that's really. the best by, by yeah. a mile. I would agree. It, it kind of looks like a, a bird from the top view a little bit. Um, I don't love the Buffalo Braves part mm-hmm. on here too much. Like if it was like a roundel or something, it might work better. Um, but this is a this is a pretty dope mid-century looking. Mm-hmm. This Mark. this to me is seventies sports design in a nutshell, kind of at its best, where it just is this very weird graphic, hmm. nebulous thing that can that that can be maybe five different things if you look at it long enough. But if you arrive at the same conclusion, where you're like, that shit just looks cool, man. I would want it on a t-shirt. Like I'd I want don't it on a t-shirt. It looks like it looks like kind of like a fishing lure. It kind of looks like. A bullet, and and then you obviously arrive at the fe- the feather shape. But yeah, it's yeah, it's getting a lot of things done while just sort of abstractly being pretty appealing looking as a graphic thing. Yeah, I always thought that was like the basketball version of the Hartford Whalers, where it's just like it's yeah. as minimal as possible, but it tells you like this is this is mm-hmm. clean. Like it would it would work today if they kind of modernized it and brought it back. Completely agree. And so we go from here to this when they moved to San Diego in 1979. Now, um, uh, this logo did did do something that you guys kind of did with your logo in the sense that it actually has something to do with boats, right? So these these sort of the sailing part. Mm-hmm. Um, this this, sort of no, this totally looks like this totally looks like a yacht club logo. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Like a lot of asshole kids were conceived at that yacht club around this time (laughs) or my age. Sorry, I'll I'll shut up for a minute now. The thing killing this logo is the red over the blue with the tight. This Mm -hmm. is just this is just a mess. That is that is some reckless abandon right there. (laughs) I almost I kind of almost respect how they're how they're just like, fuck it. We know what it is. Clippers over the sails, fuck print. It almost feels like they accidentally put Braves first and like 20 minutes before the pitch meeting, they're like, shit, guys, we're supposed to be the Clippers. And then just immediately like threw it on to get it through. Cause yeah, that part, especially like the very tops of the P where the little bit of white comes through. It's just like, man, yeah. just brutal. So oh, the, yeah, right there. Yeah. See, I never harped on that. I, the thing that always got me was the white sails, how they're, they're just off from being. <laughs> they are. <laughs> They are like, like it makes me antsy looking at it, but see, like I was so fixed on that. I never even thought about the red clippers type over. Like I, my ADD wouldn't let me go to that. How sad is it though, to go from this to this? Like you would have thought Buffalo was classier than San Diego. <laughs> it's just, uh, it, it's, it's a bizarre shift. And then also it's just, I mean, it's this team kind of in that. I mean, it tells the story is it just uh, is like, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to jump ahead, but like you go from the 79 logo to where they are, where they are present day. And it's just, it, it's just haphazard. Yeah. To, yeah. At what time do we know when Donald Sterling took over this ownership of this team? I know he doesn't own the team anymore, but. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I, I did, is it when they moved to LA from San Diego? Because oh, that would be for as huge of a piece of shit as the guy was, that would explain why the Clippers logos from 83 to 2015 are just like a ripoff of the Lakers logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is a ripoff of the Lakers logo. That's so Except white. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> like, it's literally just a shitty, like, it's just like a shitty carbon copy of the Lakers. And it's like that that sums up Donald Sterling's run as that team's owner for yeah. that time. I don't know who had the unenviable task of having to just sort of get the job of doing the cleanup on this. <laughs> right. So they take it from here to here. Um, obviously the basketball is doing some weird things here. I don't get this, like this line here. Like that's Again, it's, just, it's, it's a lack of attention and a lack of care being put in. It's like, you know, when someone's just, you know when it's – and I never put it on the designer. You know it's when, like, the fucking marketing exec or the team owner just says, like, dog, I need this now. I don't give a fuck. It looks fine. Give it to me now or you're fucking fired. Like, it's just that – that's what those decisions and what those shapes dictate yeah. to me. But – and the C, the C was improved. 
And the Los Angeles was improved. The ball rotation, the ball yeah. rendering was improved. If it's, I'm, it, it's improved, but you're still shining a turd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, well, at the end of the day, it's just the Lakers. <laughs> it's the poor man Lakers. Am I wrong, gentlemen? I mean, you tell oh, me. No, no. no. The, I'm not correct. And, and maybe like, that had to do with they were like, well, we have to flip out all the signage because they play in the same. I'll arena. say they play in the I same don't arena. Like the Lakers logo that much. <laughs> oh, I hate the Lakers logo. It's not like it's it's, it's, good. it's not good. Logo. No, we only like it because it's the Lakers, or we. I only don't like it, and I hate purple and gold. Okay, I I'm love put that out there. Fucking hate purple and yellow. Billy, do we want to do a Lakers showdown, you and me? <laughs> I'm I thought we were. Gonna, I thought we were going to do the Bucks. I thought we were going to do the Bucks. I'll do that too. I could do this all day long, buddy. Okay, okay. Put it on the list. Put it yeah. on the list. Okay, so then we get to 2015. Now. um, do you guys know who designed this one? Because I really don't want to. I don't like talking shit about someone who we probably know. <laughs> no, I don't. And look, it's it, no, I don't know. You want me to Google it? Here, hold on. But you know, in 2015, people are like, "Oh, it can't get any worse than it was." No, this is better. This is yeah. Better. I this I, is better. It's weird though because it's like the basketball itself. It's a it's a clean lockup and everything like that. It's just the random lines and the the typeface of Clippers mm-hmm. is a step back from what it was. So it's like it neutralizes itself out that it just didn't quite go anywhere. But yeah, I wonder. I'll give you my nits to pick here. The the bevel. Mm-hmm. Do we need that? Mm. No, no. The you can't see that in any smaller of a size. Yeah. Why it? Why is and this is a this is a pe- a peeve for me, the distance between like if we judge the distance between the E and the blue, and the E and the blue, it's mm-hmm. like this is not even it's slightly not centered. Yeah, is that on purpose? It's like so almost centered. Here, I, know me, I know it's a very slight thing, but those th- those no, th- no, little no. details bother the hell out of me. The the, the Clippers. The, the the every Clippers iteration of their logo for their their entire history has always been pretty minimal lean on the elements involved. So when you have these few elements involved, these little details make a huge difference, right? Mm, so, yeah. And then also in relation to the LAC monogram, which look, I don't want to shit on this thing either. Go ahead. The coolest part of it to me is that LAC C monogram. The muscle milk's making me burp like fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> This is cool. I don't have. I, I'm going to defend this. That's cool. I, will too. I, I don't mind that. I don't mind. I mean, it's not great, but it's like there's at least an idea there, right? Am I wrong? There's a there's a vibe being built with this thing. There's a vibe. <laughs> it's a basketball court. Yeah. It, I didn't even right? get into that far. I just think it looks like abstractly, just aesthetically up front. It just looks. I'm like, okay, cool. Like that's it's fine. That's that's not bad, and then in the ball, it's not bad. But when it gets to here, in relation to all these other elements, proportionally speaking, and with the the tiny razor thin bevel, it's it just looks like EA Sports branding to me. And the addition of black twenty years after everybody did that, yeah. And it doesn't. I didn't didn't think about the black. Why? Why the black? The it's it's interesting though because I. I'm not saying that my uh, interpretation of it, it solved all problems by any mm-hmm. means. I do think it's interesting that you have a team in LA that could have easily been like, they're already going to get picked on forever. And the Lakers are never really going to rebrand. If they do, it's just going to be a cleaning up. It's never going to change. Mm-hmm. But they could have gone for this street culture, blue collar, like, yeah, those hot shots over there, we own the true LA. And it just felt weird of like, they didn't do it. And even their their alternate kind of city uniforms, even though they're a little bit San Andreas in terms of the weird kind of font. Mm. It just felt like at least it was an attempt to be like, this is LA. Like, no, that was, is- I think that was their, their, their attempt at, at yeah. cooling up mm-hmm. the team brand, but it was still like, it still felt neutral and uh, do they still shallow. Play, do they still play in Staples Center or did they get their own arena? No, they're still in Staples. Still stable, yeah. It's a, no matter what they do, they're always going to be perceived as the little brother team, unless they go off and rip like five championships in a row. <laughs> yeah. Let me. If, if I was given the assignment, 
if it were me, not not a super design bowl assignment, but like a real world assignment, I like this. I'm keeping this. And <laughs> I'm just going yes, to yes, make it a roundel. Just yeah. put just put Clippers and Los Angeles, and then you have a nice little unit. It works. Okay, I, Billy, I, I can but put, I can put it on anything. I don't have to worry about this fucking whatever this thing is. Down no, Billy, here. But even though, like to me, a roundel is almost kind of like the ultimate cop out move because nothing looks bad in a roundel. But the more I look at this basketball and how it kind of reads as a crosshair and court marks on top of the basketball seams and the way that monogram works inside of it, I would I would do the same exact thing you just said. Like it's it would be a, 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 an instant upgrade. I think so. so but that was like, not to cut you off. Oh, that's no. been like the move of like NBA teams for the last four, th- four or five seasons is their upgrades to the brand is to literally just contain it within a roundel. Mm-hmm. Like I think the the Raptors did it. Uh, Hall- yeah, everybody the did, it. did it. Yes, the Sixers. Brooklyn did it. The uh, Bucks did it. The 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 problem is is it works. Just a, f- a fucking circle works, you know. Yeah, no, it's a it's a total cheat code to to have. It a is a cheat code. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So let's let's look at let's t- let's start with uh with Ryan's design here. Um. The, talk us talk us through the uh, the design process here, buddy. Yeah. So it was it was one of those things that it was like five days of just thinking about. Is it a boat? What is it? I always think there's a little something interesting about <laughs> being the anchor of LA uh, in a bad mm-hmm. sense. Uh, and then it was a looking at their CLA that we all kind of admit that it's it's fine. And just trying to say, how does that become more Clipper-like than just kind of this 70s, 80s style look? In yeah. retrospect, as soon as it went live for voting, I was like, I should have put an LA in that kind of like bottom area to fill that in just to make it sure that it's LA Clippers, but a little bit cleaned up in terms of modernizing it with some some highlights and shadows, but trying to keep it contained that if it was on a shirt or is on a hat or is on yeah. the shorts, that it feels like, yep, this is a this is Clippers. Well, both of so. you guys definitely leaned into the, uh, the nautical aspects of it, mm-hmm. which I think is smart right now they're completely ignoring it i think they're just like in the same way that the lakers la has nothing to do with lakes but la you know it is next to an ocean so it it, it does make more sense the clipper is like a giant sail sailboat right yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a fast sailing boat it's so it's safe to right? say that there's those exist somewhere in the ocean by la <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, so, I don't think out there much. Yeah, but but uh, to my point, it's just they don't have to, like the Lakers. They don't have to ignore the the nautical the nautical graphic um, elements. No, and some of their secondary stuff on their uniforms, they introduce nautical flags in in some of the trim, but it's not mm-hmm. not part of their central branding whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had that. I believe it was LAC and nautical flags at one. Yeah. Point. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cool. But like that's that to me like make work that into your main branding like that's yeah, yeah it makes it, there's so much nautical it tells like a story like I think I think what 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 sticks in my craw about the main branding of the existing Clippers right now is it doesn't tell any story or draw a connection of anything yeah so sorry Ryan um but I I think well I think what uh, there's like a lot of good things going on here even before the the lack of an introduction to LA, what trips me up about this logo, and I do like it, is is the anchor. I see a T shape in the center of the anchor. Before you see, I, T. You see the T. You see right. the T because the because of the C shape that surrounds it is is what what I think is is the well, game. I, that, I think it's because and, these don't look um, connected. It look they feel like two separate elements. So then you're Visually, you you make it look like a T. Well, they look like separate elements. I, I think this, and I, I think the it was a smart move to to combine the C shape and the anchor shape. But with the Absolutely. top half of this C on top of the anchor, your my eye my eyes begin to play this game. Like, okay, well, this center shape is like a T, and then it's like a, is a basketball and a T, and then of course, I'll see I see the anchor. So I see what's going on here, and again. 
there's a story that's being told that is doing more and doing a better job of what the current branding is doing. Oh, absolutely. I'll take this any day over the current brand. No, because I'm not like I, I think I think there's good things happening here, and I certainly don't I don't want it to come off like I'm just nitpicking and criticizing this. Oh, for really yeah, but, but you know this that's what this show's for. We're gonna. I don't want to be the Simon Cowell this shit, Billy. So you, <laughs> I'm just saying know. we're gonna nitpick because it, it's 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 <laughs> interesting to talk about design. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here making dick jokes. Yeah. The, if this was like the Toronto Clippers, it would be perfect because I'm getting that tea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then people would be like losing their shit over this thing. Uh, uh, so when you when you're starting with an idea, with the we're starting with any idea, um, did it hit you like a bolt of lightning, or were you are you in a sketchbook? Are you on an iPad? Like, what's your creative process? Um, how does it how does it flow? No, usually it's trying to just see what's out there, and I like to do that early. Um, I take that back. I like to list kind of ideas not even maybe mm. it's a really rough doodle because i i do want to at least put my own initial right off the top of my head what's out there mm. i'll be honest with you like this one yeah i think that was the nervous part when you said we're doing clippers i was like damn because it's <laughs> it's, it's a really really tough one you guys like, you guys can always say no by the no, way no, yeah, <laughs> it's just really tough because it's like it's like it's it's a not not where it needs to be as a brand but there's so many mm. elements about it that you're like is this LA like, and that's mm. where I think I was trying to go for more of this bold thought was, mm -hmm. was this, did this feel like it could be an LA team, even though it was a, a boat theme. Did um, you, I, I, not to cut you off, Ryan, did you ponder a different color scheme or did, did you, <clears throat> you wanted to stick with the current color scheme? Yeah. I think the original one that I was going to submit was the black was more the Royal and then the highlights were like a, a super light blue. So almost kind of went more retro. Oh, that's with an interesting it. Idea. Um, but then it just felt, and it maybe gets a little too heavy being black, but this thought of it just felt heavy enough to be stampable. So. No, I mean the, the again, black's like a roundel where it's just if you're looking for impact, it's hard to to be black. And and I, I'm not saying you should have explored a different color palette, but because it's you want to stick with some sort of equity that exists within this brand, so it makes sense. And I also, as I kind of always say with with most of these showdowns, is I always I always give credit for people that blow the branding existing branding up and kind of go in a different direction altogether. So I do appreciate that about, about this mark. And again, there's a lot of good things happening here with that. Agreed. Agreed. So when you, when you, you do a lot of um, exist, you know, both of you guys do a lot of sports brand, more sports branding than, than Aaron and I. Um, but when you were thinking about, your design for sports branding, how much does the technical aspect of like, oh, this is going to have to be stitched on a hat. So the lines have to be this thick or does that, does that, is that sort of like ingrained in you now of like when you're, when you're designing um, shit? For me, a hundred percent, because I spent yeah. so much time working on minor league baseball stuff and yeah. your core graphic application is a hat. So you're thinking about yeah. this embroidery being maxing out at two and three quarter inches. So how do you make sure that it's still bold enough for that? And uh, so I think even like when I do like a brewery design or work with a coffee company, it yeah. tends to always skew bold just because that's where it, it ends up a little bit thicker lines, a little bit more uh, focusing on contrasting elements. Uh, so yeah, I think like and that's what I appreciated about what Frazier did, where he just kind of took this very like sketchy old school vibe. In retrospect, it would have been like really cool to just go out of the element and be like, nothing will be thick about this. It's all gonna be these thin line detailed stuff. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I always tend to skew towards embroidery, screen printing. How are you gonna lay this out? Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I teach and like that's one of the main like when I get student work, so many times it's the lines. <laughs> so thin on everything mm -hmm. they do it's like dude you gotta you gotta thicken that shit up you know like yeah. let's simplify let's thicken 
Well, it's the same thing. Like if you ask my wife what she thinks about my logos, she's always like, why are they so damn angry? It's like, well, that's <laughs> just, it just happens. Like, angry? like, why don't you do like a happy go lucky? It's like, no, they're, it's for a team. They got to be a little bit aggressive, aggressive every single time. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I think, and also you solve the major problem that the existing Clippers branding has is that that bevel on the word mark of the current Clippers thing get, would get lost at any size, especially when it goes into stitching. It just, it, it's too diminutive, diminutive. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right. Um, cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's move well on. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Appreciate well done. It. Appreciate it. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Um, but let's, you know, we only have so much time for the losers. Let's, <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, I'm kidding. Um, let's talk to, to Derek. And let's talk about uh, same same questions. I'm tired of these questions too. Just go ahead. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, so you, you really stuck with the nautical theme uh, as well. So what what was sort of uh, your creative process? Um, uh, it's pretty, pretty similar to uh, Ryan's. I, I yeah. I start with listing things too. Like uh, that like, way. When you when you guys say listing things, are you just like boats? anchors nautical stars like yep. just writing a list of things yep. okay. Bo boats and hoes and uh, <laughs> that's, as, that's as far as i got i was like I mean, that, that, way, see, that way when i'm sketching if i'm kind of running ideas i can look back and go oh i haven't done any nautical stars or i haven't done an anchor or i haven't done a wave or you know it, it's yeah. literally just brainstorming web mapping all the fancy terms just making a list of stuff that's a that's a that's a smart way to go. I mean, when I do like um, when I used to do a lot of gig posters, that was that's a, a lot of times what I would uh, do. But I would my list would be like items and lyrics or song titles. Like it's okay, a, this is the same thing though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can refer your back self back to for inspiration for a design. Yeah, somewhere somewhere to start from. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, so I wanted to heavily. I wasn't worried about Los Angeles as far as the city, the culture. Are. It, it's they're Clippers. They've never done anything besides the three white sails. It needed to be nautical. I want to do straight up nautical. Yeah, and so um, I went back, used powder blue from the early days, and I instead of going black, I went navy. With I just wanted to use the touch of red. Um, a lot of teams are wearing red as alternates now, so there's a whole bunch of red in the NBA. Um, yeah, there is. And so I wanted to, and I know there's a ton of Navy too, um, but uh, is there though? Pardon? I, the only thing that comes to mind immediately is the Grizzlies and Pelicans or Navy uh, Pacers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I still think like it's, there's, there's still room to play with Navy. I think. Sure. Well. Yeah. And um, teaming it with the powder blue and pushing red back to a tertiary was kind of, my, although Memphis is heavily navy and powder blue with just touches of yellow anymore, but and Ryan, you said this was a color choice that you played around with as well. Yeah, yeah, and that for would have sure. been that would have been interesting if you would have stuck with that. Would have had the same sort of choice. Whatever showdown, navy showdown. <laughs> this this kind of blue is. It feels it has like that sort of '80s yacht club sort of blue. Would, mm -hmm. Am I talking out of my ass? Does that make sense? No, it makes total sense. And you know, when I went to San Diego, they were powder blue, and I believe they were a muted orange before they went to red. And so I had played with that a little bit too, but pushing it to more of a rust to get it more modern looking, and it it didn't quite feel right. No, I think sometimes it, it, you know you do you do the diligence to play around, but mm -hmm. it, it's hard to beat powder blue and navy as a combo. It just is. It sings at least to me. Like I don't like navy on its own for anything. I never wear navy clothes. Mm -hmm. But I see powder blue and navy in the sports branding. It never looks bad. <laughs> Doesn't it's, it's the you know the don't the Mariners have a the Mariners are have a nautical star. They have like a yeah, nautical star compass shape. I, I, mean, I forgot all about that. To be honest, the, I it just occurred to me the the um but the basketball with the nautical star. I mean you know, you're pairing circles with circles and it just, mm -hmm. it matches so well, you know, I mean, with the, with the, with the anchor, the anchor luckily has a circle as a part mm -hmm. of it too. And you're able to incorporate that. Um, so it's, 
um, oh. you know, you're putting a, a round peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. And so and so the marriage really works together with the, with the icon. Yeah, and so, is this different enough from the Mariners? I think you would have your share of assholes on Twitter that would be like, go oh, cool Mariners logo, but it's, it, it's different <laughs> it enough. I'm sure that's, a, I'm sure someone has seen that and said it. No, so it's, I, all, all the comments I had to delete. There were so many comments I had to delete. <laughs> I don't do social media. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There were no comments about like that. There was there was nothing like that. But um, in my in my sketching, I had drawn this. Um, well, just looking at uh, uh, Ryan's work, I'm like, oh man, this guy's going to do something super illustrative. It's going to be super cool. And so I kind of had done this ship where the sails kind of made the lines on the basketball and all this stuff. Oh. And then I went online and I'm like, I should just do Clippers concepts. Just do a quick search. And there it was. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I'm like the drum board. And then like Aaron mentioned the roundel. I actually had played with the, I settled on the compass because I was kind of like, man, everything's out there. Personally, I've done anchors for stuff. So I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son actually has a, I don't know where he got it. has a brass compass from a ship. And I'm, like, and I'm like, oh, it's a circle, a basketball, perfect. Everybody's going with roundels, and that's. And at the last minute, I'm like, you know what? I, I roundels kind of being lazy, so I, you know, I end up just. <laughs> Aaron would have tore you a new one. <laughs> it's I, and so I was like, oh, I'll just put some type on, it. and I and I and like you talked about the line weight. I totally know the red would not work at the weight it is. But I figured, hey, it's just an online competition for fun. Totally, totally. But I mean, if, if you did the whole suite, you'd have different optical mm -hmm. sizes. For my for my selfish needs too, I'm a sucker for concentric circles and in bullseye type of elements. So I, I appreciate that being weaved in there as well. And then, like you said, like it's a nice. You can get away with using red as a tertiary thing, mm -hmm. as a touch. Um, if you're not leaning on it, it, it to sort of differentiate yourself from other teams in the league. It was super hard not to get cliche on this. I don't know if Ryan, you might be able to add to this too. Was like, at one point, I did a rope around the circle too, and I was like, nope, that's too much. That's too much because they, you know, the Clippers have no nautical imagery, but there's mm -hmm. so much you could do. So, you know, oh, that's that. Yeah, that's interesting. So when you so you, you you created a really strong mark, and so then you have to ask yourself, okay, what. Am I going to, if I, you know, am I going to do the roundel like you were saying? Like, is, mm -hmm. is the type going to go around? How is the type going to work with this? Are they going to be basically two separate images? Like, how? I had the, that I had the northeast, southeast, the, the other directionals were smaller and fatter so that the type was going, would go around. Mm -hmm. It, it, it it would, then it got to be too much. You know, there is a lot going on in this, even though yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. that's why I kept the dimensional things, just little blue highlights and just re started just for lack of better words, neutering it. Like I said, it, it's, it's a very simplistic mark. There's, you know, it is what it is. It's, I mean, this, this, it's not curing cancer. It's just, a, there, there's enough Stop talking down about it. It's good. It's, it's yeah. a, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a clean idea that, that this works. But well, there's, well, let, me, let me be arrogant. At the same time, it's like, why the hell haven't they just done something like this? <laughs> yeah. It's a basketball. It's round. It's a compass. It's round. Do it. Yeah. Or it could have been the the, the boat steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Long um, John Silver's kind of thing. I want to speak to the, the type work real quick because um, modern sports type to me, super hard to do. This obviously it's, it stays in the lane of modern sports typography, and one thing that drives me up the fucking wall about most of it is there's just needless serifs going on and needless notching and detailing going on here, and you absolutely nailed. Thanks. You know, well, it's got the pointed serifs on the P's and the R's, but, but it's it's just enough. You know, on the crossbar, on the E, in the in the A's. Um, I'm really showing my, my chops with my typography vernacular here. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it's, it's enough. There's enough flavor to it. It, it doesn't feel like an afterthought and um, it, it just works really nicely. Cool. Thank and you. So, and, and I'm assuming the points are sort of, we're sort of, you know, the, the store, the star, the store, yeah. the star is pointy. So let's, we, let's incorporate some pointy. 
elements. A, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it also it also reeks of I looked at the the existing Clippers word mark and I made it better. I mean, this this thing's a this thing's sturdier. It looks more locked in. You you there's no beveling going on here. There's no needless tinkering beyond what's what's here that's that's not needed. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that we're sort of I feel like we're I mean, we 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 have been, but we're we're leaving that era, you know, that era is dead of of drop shadows and too many bevels for the most part, you mm-hmm. know. No, it is no, you're right. It's all clean type now and you know, a lot of freestanding type. There's not keystroke heavy keystrokes around stuff anymore. People just want a clean, nice custom typeface that they can own. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I forgot to mention this. Did, did you guys notice my sailor's hat, my fisherman hat today? You've been wearing this thing for fucking 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I was like, he's going with like a cool skipper deal today just because I don't know. He just wants to be spicy, I guess. I didn't. <laughs> I mean, it is a great look. You can't, you can't it deny it. Wrong, Billy. Um, you put more thought into your look than I did today, and you're to be commended. <laughs> well, he can try out for a Clippers mascot. There you go. You know what? That's a great idea. Do they have a mascot? It's probably like not a sailor. There's no possible way they have a mascot. They barely have branding. <laughs> it makes no sense. They have Steve Ballmer is like one of the most like charismatic. Yeah, he people. is their mascot. Yeah, no, he, he's like sitting <laughs> like acting crazy. So he really kind of is the team mascot, but I don't yeah. think there's not more consideration put into these these aspects of the team with him at the helm. It made sense when Donald Sterling on the team because he was like Trump before Trump. Was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the dude was a was just an, an abominable, um, cartoonishly bad person. But uh, doesn't make any sense with the dude, the Balminator or uh, whatever his friends. Call. But you can tell, like that's why the logo was so bad. At it. He had the money to spend the rebrand. He's just like, eh, it's good enough. Yeah, he yeah. Or, like, or he really got his fingers in there and he was really he might really think that shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah who knows you can't you know it's like i don't know any billionaires but i'm willing to bet if they get in their head that they like something it's very hard to tell them that it's not hot that, like yeah. gold toilets like what like gold toilets <laughs> like gold you know, toilets yeah those aren't, those aren't awesome. <laughs> that was a trump reference for you no. oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that I don't want it anymore. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we all know how this goes with branding, and you guys probably know it better than me and Billy. It's you get a bunch of chefs in the kitchen, and oh, and very few of them have know how to boil an egg, and and it's very hard to get good design across the finish line. It yeah, how do you guys how do you guys deal with that? I mean, we try to educate our clients on how to think design, you know, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking to a president of a university or something like that, you know, the, how do you, you can't automatically give them good tastes. Right. Um, So I don't know. It's a real interesting and hard, uh, uh, you know, uh, lane to stay in or or a rope to walk, uh, like how to, steer them away from bad ideas <laughs> you know that uh it's the same with any client really like you know they they want to have a part you know they want to feel like they were involved in it take, yeah. take what they you know take what they said give them what they want but then also expand upon it and make it yours and kind of show them yeah i wonder if like uh, Maybe you have this experience and maybe you don't, but let's say you were a chief designer on a, a school's redesign and it rolled out and the fans hated it mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Not oh, they, all, they always hate it. To they be always hate it. <laughs> but, have they, but when that when that reaction happens, does the president of the university uh, blame himself or does he blame you guys or nobody? <laughs> uh, kind of nobody. Yeah, uh, because there's with kind of today's climate, like I, we, I think we were off air. We talked about, or maybe you mentioned that the changing of native names. Yeah, because they're gonna hate it no matter what. 
You know what I mean? Because they hate the fact the name has changed. So you can put the coolest logo out there and they'll hate it because the name is not what they grew up with. It's not who they rooted for. It's yeah, you enter, you kind of enter having to skate uphill, so to speak. On yeah, it. It's really a no win. The best thing you can do is keep, you know, retain colors if possible, you know, that sort of thing. And just, yeah. And so, any people are going to blame whoever they want to blame, you know, when they go on Facebook or whatever and complain. It's, oh, I can't believe we paid for this. Well, you don't know if the school paid for it. It was private donation, you know, those sorts uh, of things. Yeah. You know, the school always gets blamed for can't we have spent money better elsewhere? Mm. Well, the school doesn't always pay for it. You know, there's so donors times, there's yeah. uh the licensing companies will pay for it and you know, and then do their deal with the school. I think uh, not to cut you off, Derek, like there's a spiel I generally give most clients where through the door, if I start to get the inclination that they're gonna be the kind of client that wants to show it to 19 different people mm -hmm. and listen to every one of those 19 people. I just say, look, I'm like, you're not going to win over everybody with this. Correct. There's always going to be someone on your Facebook page, someone on Instagram that just wakes up mad and wants to fucking shit on something or mm -hmm. just they hate it. Um, and, and of course, like getting kind of big picture, you, you don't want to be everything to everybody, even in sports branding. You want to. Well, it's impossible. You'll make no, it sick. It's, it, it is impossible. And, and you, you need to serve the needs of. The team and the in the project and the mm -hmm. live with it. And in and in four years, they'll think that was always the logo. Yeah. Once yeah. well, the fan base comes. Yeah, if the team's winning, they don't they won't give a shit is always the cosmic joke of it. Is like if the if the program's successful, it, it begins to take on the smell of winning and people don't care. That's why it goes right back to like yeah. you said, the Lakers logo and uniform. That's a winner. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, you don't, yeah. You don't change a winner. No, right, right. I mean, it's it, it, and aesthetically, it's just not, you know, like the Yankees branding looks great and it's classic and it'll never change, but it also happens to be great. And, and mm -hmm. but the Lakers is just, <laughs> like, no, I mean, it's, I, you know, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but when I look at it, I was, I go, if I didn't know what basketball was and I didn't know what the Lakers was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a, a t shirt of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also you know, a weird time in design, especially in sports. Of it's not even just the aesthetics of the logo. It's also selling them on the applications of said branding. I think, I think schools and teams and companies are starting to realize that it's just not one logo. It's a series of logos, or it's colors, it's digital, it's print. I think I feel like they're starting to become a little bit more keen of how does my brand look as a family that they weren't five, six, ten years ago. Cause they're thinking about, well, what if I put it on an app or how do I do this or how do I do signage? And so I do think that they've matured to some extent of understanding the bigger picture, not that they fully do it. And that's why they rely on us as designers, but yeah, yes, you're going to have the people that are going to be really angry, but they're not kind of keeping in mind the people that don't say anything, but they're still buying the shirt. They're still buying the hat. They're still going to the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where it's like, even when the Rams came out and it was a little iffy of like the color of bone and what is it? they're still selling millions upon millions of dollars of yeah. swag that those people will never say anything. They're just, that that's the Rams. I'll buy it. And mm -hmm. uh, money talks. And as, as long as they're cashing in on the back end, yeah. th they'll be just fine. So I mean, it, those teams and Nike specifically and outfitters that are as big as Nike, it, it, it almost doesn't matter because they make too, they're too big to fail. These things make too much money for them to not keep generating money. Mm -hmm. especially in the world of merchandising. So yeah, you know, in a sense, when they trot out all these city uniforms and some of them look like figure skating outfits or they look like no one had hands on this thing, it doesn't, it almost just doesn't matter. As, as saddening as that is to say as an artist and a designer, because. Well, Ryan probably deals with this too, but like Nike and apparel manufacturers have funneled colors down. You know, it used to be Purdue had a gold, Notre Dame had a gold, Colorado had a gold. Now it's what Nike produces. That's your gold. Oh, yep. really? You know what I mean? Like, oh, makes no. that's, that's if you think about it from, I don't know how old everybody is, but you know what I mean? Like when I was yeah. a kid, everybody had different shades of gold. There were so many different shades of green. Now it's like, yeah. if you look at the colleges, their Pantones might be different, but uniforms, you get in two shades of green. You get <laughs> And that's yeah. where you get the problem of like a helmet is different than a uh, jersey, which is different than pants. And that's even like dealing with fanatics. We we were 
getting stuff ready for the Super Bowl and it's Kansas City and Tampa Bay, they're not going to create shirts that are the exact same color. They're both the same color shirt. It's just a matter of what the print goes on because they can control the ink color. Yeah. And so it's this weird wheel of just kind of doing a little charades of, oh, everything's custom. But in reality, it's like we have three colors of orange. You're going to fall under one of those. Orange. Yep. Like, <laughs> like your hat right now, I guarantee you it's the same color as the Baltimore Orioles. And it's just like maybe in the style guide, they're two different Pantones. Right. Yep. They even tell the teams, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're having bright orange. Yours is orange. A. Don't worry about it. They're the same. <laughs> same color yep. Yeah, time. that's so interesting. I had never even thought about that before. No, I didn't either. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for, first of all, doing uh, free work for the Super Design Ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely thankless work. And then you get, and you get to come on the internet and we get to um, critique your logos, which is another thing you know you didn't know you were going to be in for. Um, but I really appreciate you guys' participation. I really enjoyed the show. And you guys, you know, welcome back anytime. Um, if you ever have a great logo idea that you just want to get off your chest, let me know and I'll get you a matchup. No, and, solid, uh, solid work, gentlemen. And thanks for putting yourselves out there with it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it guys. Thanks so much. Thanks Bye. guys.